I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. You know, pondering, thinking. I would normally say meditation, but unfortunately, in the culture that we live in, America, <laughs> meditation right now seems to be a dirty word to some Christians. and I'm not quite sure why they've gotten so carried away that they are intimidated by different words that possibly they may be misunderstanding or misapplying how people can actually meditate on the Word of God and think about God. But irregardless, I've been thinking about God lately. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting is that I've been teaching at Vidivo Spirit on the Spirit of God and who He is as opposed to what we think He is or what we think the aspects of the Holy Spirit are because a lot of people have taken this whole spiritual thing and gone way over the top. I mean, if you don't have people running around looking for ghosts, you have people running around looking for experiences. You know, kind of like being weird and being strange instead of being normal. That kind of blows my mind because as I've been teaching this Vidivo Spirit and using Chuck Smith's Living Waters book, I've been impressed by and talked to by God himself telling me that there is something more that we don't know than what we do know. That I need to be walking slower and thinking longer about the things that I'm teaching about the Spirit of God because I don't really think we have a complete appreciation of who he is as far as what he does, how he operates, and how he works in the life of you and I. A lot of times, I know for myself, I've had people tell me things that when I investigated for myself, I disagreed with. I would go to the Bible and I would study it and I would look at all that the scriptures had to say, not just some portion or some little part, but I would look everywhere I could find anything on a topic or subject, and I would read about it. You know, just read it as it was written, not try to put something into it or try to pull something out of it. And I wouldn't have any preconceived ideas. You know, I would just try to let the Word of God speak for itself. And as I did in all my life as a Christian, I would discover things that I would share with people and then later discover in church history or somewhere in some type of study that I wasn't the first one to think of it, but a lot of times people had forgotten that it had already been taught or that it had already been shared or in some ways people had separated themselves so that they didn't know that maybe this person was right about this topic and wrong about something else, so they just rejected all that the person had to say. Well, I always figured that we all have a piece of the puzzle and we're all trying to figure it out. So I kind of looked at things a little differently because I didn't have the benefit of all these, you know, educated schoolings that you could go to, you know, like Bible college or seminary and all the theological practical applications of dogmatism or doctrines or soteriologies or ologies, you know all the ologies there are, you know, theology, soteriology and you know, all the other ones that we could list and you know come up with. But I did have one thing that I think sometimes people I thought everyone had, but sometimes some of these theologians didn't have. And that's a personal relationship with God. I, I talked to God and God talked to me because I would figure, hey God, I don't understand, so I would ask him and I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to get an answer. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be talking to God, but I was supposed to be talking about God. So I kind of messed things up, you know, when I was growing up as a Christian, that I always talked to God and kind of had that intimacy, you know, that I figured, well, you know, if God's there, he's going to talk to me one way or another. And so I would push the issue. I would confront things I didn't understand in a direct manner. I would yell at God. If I said I didn't understand it, I went to God about it. And I said, God, 
and I'd get out in a parking lot sometimes, sometimes in my own house, sometimes in the quiet of my heart, sometimes, you know, in places that were more obvious where I could really express myself. And I'd yell, you know, or I'd stomp around, or I'd cry, or I'd whine, or I'd do whatever it was at the time that I was feeling it. Because I wanted God to know, hey, I wanted to know. And by golly, God seemed to take that under consideration in some way. He always seemed to reveal his character as the Father by loving me enough to not wipe me out in the first place, but then second of all, not just putting up with me or telling me to shut up or that someday I would know in the sweet by and by like people like to tell you some kind of story, but that he would begin to open up my heart so that I could see things that I didn't know about myself, but then he would also open up his word to me as well as himself and talk to me. And I began to depend upon that. I began to kind of count on him teaching me. And you know, later as I began to know who the Spirit of God was and how the Holy Spirit operated in teaching us and applying all of these truths about God to us, I began to realize we are a hasty people. Sometimes we want to know everything now, like a drive through restaurant. We want to have all the answers, all the questions, and everything all put together in a nice little package so that we could find out about it in one day. And maybe if we spend two days on it, we're lucky. Well, I was a little different, like I said already from the beginning. I spent years sometimes thinking about one question. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't think constantly, always ongoing that same question, but I would keep it in my mind until I finally had all that I could really kind of pull out of it that I understood, that I really grabbed a hold of and got a, sunk my teeth into, that I could say to myself, I have the answer on that question. And believe me, I have a lot of questions, and man, I was you know, out there, <laughs> big time, questioning everything. And so, because I did, you know, I'm pretty confident about what I've learned. And recently, when I've been studying this Spirit of God, you know, as He's been revealing it to me, I've been amazed at some differences of my opinion that I have that other people have taken for granted because they just accept what they're being told. And, you know, I don't mind that, you know, so much so. I just sometimes wonder if we shouldn't all maybe spend a little more time thinking about things, you know, kind of like taking our time on things that are really important, you know, like your life, you know, like your decision-making process, the way that you take in information, the way that you process it, you know, without jumping to conclusions or reacting to everything that you hear or see, but taking the time to sleep on it, to think about it, to consider it, to ponder it. That's what I've been doing lately with the Spirit of God when it comes to understanding who He is and what He does in my life. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. The love of the Spirit, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them, and he bore them, and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. After that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the day of redemption of the purchased possession. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. The Spirit helps our infirmities. You know, I have to admit, as much as I've talked about 
and I've related over and over again in video about sharing you know personal and intimate relationship with God it doesn't mean that I don't sin it doesn't mean that I still don't fall into temptation or trials and tribulations and that sometimes I win and sometimes I lose you see there's still a war within my soul that I figure is the only battle that I really have to be involved in because all these other wars and rumors of wars and things happening in the world to me are just you know children playing games with thinking that they're in charge and in control but the real battle field is in my heart it's in my soul it's with my spirit and the spirit of God that's in me because together he and I have been fighting my tendency to jump into things or to deal with sin in a way that doesn't benefit me any at all. You see, the more that I involve myself in things that separate me from God, the less I am the person I want to be. Because I've already run into and encountered Jesus in a personal way. I know who I want to be like. Do you? I know what I what I want to be like not just who I want to be like but I know what I want to be like I don't want to be you know antagonistic or you know treated as though I were like prideful in some way just simply because I have an intelligence you know I like to share personally all that I've learned about God without there being some kind of you know animosity from other people because they've gotten into the flesh or I've gotten into the flesh I like to discuss things in an open way where we can be real and be truthful and honest without having to worry about feelings and cares and concerns that really are just fleshy ideas because after all God is the one who's saving us isn't he hasn't he said that he will perfect that which concerns me if we have God on our side working in us and he's working on us and he's working with us then what seems to be our problem when it comes to dealing with ourselves shouldn't we be more active in this whole idea and concept of denying ourselves and kind of like taking up our cross and following Jesus because after all Jesus did die he did go to the cross he did crucify that perfect body he lived in and yet he rose from the dead because God accepted his sacrifice what is so hard for us to offer our lives as a sacrifice to see if God will not raise us from the dead too is it really that terrifying to give our lives over to God or to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God so that he could change us in some way is there something today that you're dealing with or that you're wrestling with is there something today that you're fighting with in your flesh that you really want to get rid of? Maybe if you take time to think about it, you know, be still and know that He is God. If you take time to let God talk to you about it, maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. Maybe there's something that's happening not just in the visual realm where you see that temptation or the the audio realm where you hear of something and it provokes you or you you know read something and it triggers some emotion maybe there's something more behind it in the spiritual realm that if we weren't paying so much attention to the world and we were focused more on the kingdom of God we might be less provocable less intimidated by the world and its ways as it involves us and tries to pull us into what it's doing and we might be more sensitive to the Spirit of God because after all I wouldn't want to grieve the Holy Spirit to the point where he left me even as David cried out take not thy Holy Spirit from me but restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me is that not what we want today for God to renew a right spirit within us I personally enjoy when God makes me humble and meek and tender usually the way he does that is I get busted for something but you know there have been times where just the very person of 
the Spirit of God come into my life or come into my place, like even now walking through here, where I feel peaceful, calm, meek, without having to be busted for it. Wouldn't that be a better way to walk if we could walk in the Spirit of God as opposed to having to crucify our flesh? I think we have a choice. We can suffer the consequences of our decision-making process by going out and sinning and then asking forgiveness. And we will be forgiven up until a point where we no longer receive that if we are continuation of some kind of non-salvation issues. But I think there's a better way than just asking for forgiveness seven or seventy times or 490 times or however many times we do from God but that there may be a more excellent way that if we truly love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and we love Him as our first love like we did the first time we fell in love and had that overwhelming emotion that made us see things in a different way then if we return to that love of Jesus maybe that's what the Spirit of God has been trying to tell us as we are told to walk in His Spirit to walk in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit of God as He's leading us today.